I am going to try to fix the proportion of this picture with this dog so that it fit easier on a billboard by adding a lot more space over here. Now I'm going to do it one of two ways. I'll call this first way the quick down and dirty way. Uh, grab the background, duplicate it, image, image size. I want the height of the picture to be about 11. I'm going to change the canvas size to 25. Click this dot so it adds all the extra space to the left hand side over here and I get this. I'm going to go ahead and grab the eyedropper tool and I'm going to choose whether I want this kind of lighter gray, medium gray, or whatever. I'm going to choose this kind of something kind of in between that loads it up in the foreground. Then I'm going to come in here with the paintbrush tool, a massive brush. And I'm going to go ahead and start to fill in the background of this entire picture. It is going to leave loose the texture that we had from kind of like the original photographer's mesh background. That's a good start. Now I'm going to zoom in. Maybe not too far though. And I'm going to make the brush much smaller so that I can get closer to the dog. Even if I cover the dog a little bit, as long as the brush is fuzzy, it's not going to be that bad. And I'm going to come in here. And ta-da! I've got a nice background for this so that I can easily add my writing and things over here. That's a quick down and dirty way to be able to do this. But there's a slightly better way that I could try to retain the light and the dark swirls in the background. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and throw Actually, I'm just going to hide that copy. I'm going to duplicate the original background, move this on top, and I'm going to try to change the background copy two to be what I want it to be. Now, because it's something I know I'm going to need in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Boink! Without dragging a copy down, which makes this blank gray and white checkerboard grid. And I'm going to quickly come in here and fill that with a bright pink color. I'm on that layer one, edit, fill with the foreground color. Click OK, neat. This layer needs to go underneath my background copy too. Let go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the dog out completely and I'm going to create a new background that looks something kind of more like this. So I could come in here and um, go back to my top copy here. I'm going to go use the quick selection tool. It's generally the third one down. I'm going to go ahead and have a brush size that's about this big, and I'm going to rub it on top of the dock. Then I'm going to let go. And I can tell I didn't grab all the dog, so I'm going to go back in and try to get a little bit more of the dog. For some reason, I come out here and I get a lot of the background. I can always hit Command Z to undo that last step, but I'm trying to get more of the dog. I could hit the Q button just to stare, and I know that if I zoom in, I can see I didn't get all the jowl here. So I'm going to hit Q to get back out. And I'm going to make my brush size be a lot smaller, which will be easier for me to grab that part of the dog. And just say, I'm going to lose some of these flyaway hairs here. I'm going to lose some of the whiskers over in here, but I just want to see if this might be a better approach to it. Now. In order to make sure that my selection is pretty good, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on this Select and Mask button. This feature only appears if you have certain of the tools selected that are used for masking. And it happens to correspond with this Quick Selection tool. So I'm going to click on this. Now this is the reason why I had that pink background in here, because it's going to allow me to, to see what I've done here. And I can maybe tell that it's a little bit jagged selection right in here. Well, I could pull the Smooth button over. And that should all fill in and be a nice smooth edge along that thing there. If I wanted to, if I thought the edge was too hard or too dark, I could feather the edge, which softens this transition in here. I'll leave that a little bit. I could also do something weird. This shift edge is normally set at zero. If I pull it to the left, it encroaches on the dog a, little, a lot. Maybe you had a photograph where there was a huge halo around the dog. That would allow you to get rid of that. Or maybe if you zoomed in too tight, this would allow you to actually see some of the gray halo around here. I'm not going to change that. All I've done here 
is I have smoothed it a little bit and I've feathered it a little bit and clicked OK. Now at this point, I need to make a mask on this. So what I'm really going to do here now is while my selection is still active, I'm going to come down and look for the Add Layer Mask icon. Pop. And as soon as I've done that, just because my pink layer is there, I have completely cut out the background and the dog is a very separate object on this one. Neat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another new layer. Boink. And as long as I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and hide some of these so that I can come back and see the original so that I can take the eyedropper tool and find the lighter gray in my foreground. Hit this, the switcher button, and now I'm going to take the highlighter and I'm going to grab a darker gray. And you probably can't tell much of a difference, but you can see that it's dark and light. I'm going to switch them back like this. And now on this new layer, I'm going to go ahead and go up to where I'm going to grab this tool, the gradient tool. And I could, if I wanted to, on this layer, I could use this tool and move this underneath my cutout dog just so I can see what's happening. But I'm still on layer two. I could fade from, in this case, this pattern is showing light to dark, light to dark. I could come down here and I could go light to dark. And that way I've re-added a pattern that isn't just the flat gray, it goes from dark to light. I could try that again. I could go, hit Command Z, I could go light to dark. I could go back to being light to dark. I could also, if I just dragged it from here to here, that's going to mean the light to dark fade is just right in this spot. So I could play with where I wanted my darker gray to actually start. I get a little bit more three-dimensional look than what I do just by having the original solid gray in there. The other thing that I could do is I could go change this tool from the gradient, from the linear, to a radial. Radial, fading from light to dark. And I could start here in about the middle of the picture, and I could just drag it to a corner. And it's going to kind of make a ball with kind of a glow of the lighter gray in the middle fading out to the darker one. I could also decide that I want to kind of put that, use the dog as the center of that. So drag this and pull it over here to the side. So now my highlight area is around the dog. Do a much smaller amount. And I can just now I can almost see a ball in there. But this allows me to keep playing and ultimately to see that maybe I've figured out a way to keep the dog, added all the extra spot over here, but rather than it being a solid gray color, which doesn't look all that realistic, I've got this blend in here so it's a little bit more natural looking. And then again, I can save. So all I did on this one was I used the selection tool to grab the dog. I made a mask from it. Yes, I played with the edge of the mask to feather it and smooth it a little bit. And then on a brand new blank layer, I used the eyedropper tool to select a lighter gray. Well, it's still a dark gray to an almost black. And then I grabbed the gradient tool and just decided whether I wanted to try out a linear blend or a radial blend. And then there's some other ones in here too if you wanted to ever experiment with them. But most of the time people use on YouTube just use the linear or the gradient one. It's another way to have fixed my issue.